What's up, everybody? This is Dose Do Money. Just letting y'all know that the Pass and Fly Hour is now available on Patreon.com. That's P A T R E O N dot C O M, where you can find all of the footage that we get on our IG Live interviews with all of our amazing guests. You know what I mean? YouTube may not let us put everything on there. Some things may get a little hot and wild, too hot for YouTube, or a little too crazy, or whatever the fuck. But if you subscribe to our Patreon, you'll have full unlimited access to every interview that we have available, including some other perks, if you are so willing to pledge a little bit more. That includes being a possible upcoming guest on the show and even having your brand promoted on every entry. So make sure that you visit Patreon. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot C-O-M forward slash the Pass and Fly Hour. That's T-H-E-P-A-S-S-N-F-L-Y-H-O-U-R. I love y'all. Dose the money. Pass and fly in this bitch. Peace. <laughs> Stressed about a bitch, cup hunted on my wrist. They can do it like this. Pop brownies in the oven, while stir fried fish. Real players know the best. This is what you hard to miss. I said I'm making moves like a magician, my vision go past him redition Of avatars of fake beginnings, man that shit gotta be sickness Yeah, I'm sipping tea in mind and minds, you have to reach one at a time Page most minds, the ground will make the weight sublime All people do crime and ain't a black thing, all kind of animals like the Tiger King But don't come at mine, to my fam, I'll have you shook like lightning Just pray to God, man, and just ask for discernment I'm learning the majority one is Audi like the German whip Still got it on our back, they haven't left up. Private systems in the knowing we fed up, man, man, shit, we fed up Time to redefine, open your mind, meditate, I'm real and why Dream opportunities around you, don't be a sucker and waste what God amount of you Just find that works, be measured, what your determination allows Now as we all know Hey yo, what's up everybody, this is Dose to Money in the building You know what I'm saying, welcome to the Pass and Fly Hour you know what I mean? Before we get the show started, just want to let y'all know that we have an actually, you know what I mean, very special guest in the building. He's about to join us in a few, and uh, we just have a few announcements. Uh, first off, you know what I mean? New music video on the way. You know what I mean? Mine featuring TSF's own Vucci P, also co-starring Saucewood winning. You know what I mean? We filmed it out in Houston in Splashtown. You know what I mean? Directed by the homie Flawless Films. You know what I mean? So that video is dropping tonight after this episode, after this interview with the one and only Matic Beats. You know what I'm saying? Now, um, another update. Another update. Um, some of y'all may have noticed that uh, YouTube has been taking down some of the Pass and Fly Hour videos. Uh, as you know, uh, my interviews, I interview almost everybody and anybody, but uh, some of my interviews you know what I mean, include adult film entertainers, you know what I mean, shout out to Nina Stacks, Ariel aka Eve Madison, you know what I'm saying, uh, shout out to uh, Telly Fucking Go and all that, and you know, sometimes things can, get, things can get a little crazy, you know what I mean, in the interviews, therefore YouTube is saying no no to it, I will still continue to put these videos on YouTube first, but you know, inevitably, YouTube will start to take off videos that they deem inappropriate, whether it's nudity, twerking, whatever the fuck, you know what I'm saying? So, because of that, uh, we have partnered up with Patreon, that's P-A-T-R-E-O-N, and that website basically has no restrictions when it comes to content, 
You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, I partnered up with an amazing website named Patreon. I could put the videos on Patreon without any hassle. And all that is needed from y'all in order to access the too hot to handle videos that YouTube will not allow is just a pledge of $5 a month. That's the same amount of money as two McChickens and a large fry, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? So if you want to skip your lunch break or skip your munchie break, you know what I mean, for one day, and for a whole month in exchange, you'll have access to all the wild interviews that we have on the Pass and Fly Hour. At the same time, if you're willing to pay $15 a month, I will personally invite you to be on your own episode of the Pass and Fly Hour. I don't care if you're a rapper, if you're an athlete, if you're an actor, actress, if you're an adult film star, if you just did a bit and want to tell your story, you know what I'm saying? If you're just, you know, someone who just wants to talk to dose, do money and just talk your shit. You know what I mean? Show someone, you know, show the people who you are to get some followers. You know what I mean? I'm here and I'll show my appreciation by putting you on the show with me. And we'll talk our shit for a good hour on the Pass and Fly Hour. You know what I mean? It's all love. And for the businesses and the entrepreneurs and the business owners, for $50 a month, you know what I'm saying? I will plug in your brand on every episode. That means before and after every interview, your logo will be portrayed. And I will also vocally shout you out on every episode Thanking you for supporting the brand and pledging $50 to the Pass and Fly Hour. You know what I'm saying? So, making a good thing out of a complication. You know what I mean? YouTube, you know, they can't just have people having their titties out and twerking and shit and talking about crazy shit on all their videos. So, you know, they took some shit down. But, if you go on to Patreon.com, that's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot C-O-M forward slash the Pass and Fly Hour. T-H-E-P-A-S-S. N-F-L-Y-H-O-U-R You will have full contact Or full What's it called? Full access You'll have full access Excuse me To all the videos that YouTube has restricted You know what I'm saying? But with that being said We have a very special guest today You know what I'm saying? One of my homies I call him my brother You know what I'm saying? A Jersey hip-hop legend in my opinion Because this man has been doing this rap shit For like 15 years Plus you know what I'm saying? Co-host of the Logic with Two G's Unplugged po uh, podcast. Pardon me, Logic with Two G's Unplugged podcast. Make sure you uh, subscribe on YouTube. My friend, my homie, my brother, Matic Beats. We're about to get him in here right now. Yo, yo, what's, what's going on? How you doing, bro? What's going on, man? Shit, man, chilling, bro. I've been hungover all day, my nigga. Where? Just recovering. <laughs> oh, yeah, how you doing, bro? You good? Yeah, man, I'm cooling, man. That's what it is. What you end up doing last night, bro? Shit, I was just chilling at the crib, man. You know what I'm saying? I had some fireball and some beers, but then I stepped outside, and all my neighbors have their drinks, so they were giving me swigs and all that. Uh -huh. And before you know it, I was drunk as hell. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so was, you know what I mean? Like, other than that, man, you know, I already introduced you and everything, you know what I mean? This is my homeboy, one of my day ones. I've been knowing this dude before the Carter 3 dropped. You know what I'm saying? This is Matic Beats in the building representing the 856 South Jersey. Jersey as a whole, the Philadelphia area, co-host of Logic Unplugged Podcast with King Ab and Shea Styles. Introduce yourself, brother. Welcome to the PNF Hour, bro. Yo, first and foremost, man, shout out to Dose Do Money for having me. Shout out to the Pass and Fly Hour. You know what I'm saying? Um... Shout out to this man. He just he just did a, a four or five city tour, man. Came yeah. back, got some shit that he about to dump on y'all. This shit about to have y'all going crazy, man. You just don't even know to have. But uh, <laughs> yeah, shout out to you know the uh, Logic Unplugged the uh, uh, cast and everybody. Shout out to Shay Chase. You know, shout out to the whole squad. You know, what I mean, Fresh Living Young, Higher Issues. We got the pass and fly, those new well, money. We got the all the brands here, you know what I'm saying? So shout out to everybody. Salute, salute. Shout out to everybody. Yes, yeah, shout out to Fresh Living Young. Shout out to Higher Issues. You know, we we working, man. And and we're definitely making waves, man. So it's like nope. you know, like Maddie, you you've been doing this shit for a long time, man. But let's let's start from the beginning, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know what I mean? Me being hungover, I'm having pineapple juice instead of beer. But uh you know what I'm saying? It's all good, but just uh, give us some insight as to, you know, your beginnings. Like, you're from Jersey. You were born and raised in Jersey, right? South Jersey, right? 
Yes, sir. Born and raised in South Jersey. Um, yeah, born in born in Stratford. Yeah, you know I mean, and I grew up really in um, I grew up in a lot of apartments in uh in Lindenwald. Um, I'm trying to remember that the one the first apartment was La Toscada. Then we moved from uh, some other apartments to Jamestown Square. So I've been in South Jersey my whole life. Then um, you know, once I got a little older, we uh, moved out to Brittany Woods. I'm going to Township, so yeah, man. I've been on the South Side for a minute, man. No doubt, no doubt, man. And um, you are a uh, a producer who's been producing and performing. I think we had a combo, and you know what I mean. Y'all may not know me and Matic. We're part of a group called the Corner Boys. Shout out to Casa and Goth Guy. You right. know what I mean. Corner Boys. New music man. group. You know what I'm saying. Word is born. You know what I mean. Shout out Casa and Goth Guy, man. And uh, we had an interview where Matic gave his his uh his history of music and you started rapping and performing how old were you like 13 your first performance my first yeah, my first performance i was 12 oh um, shit it was wild yeah uh shout out to Dwayne. they know who they are Dwayne, darren yeah i mean dwight his brother man it started that's what kind of started the brand triple threat it started with us three we had a group and you know what i mean we ended up we the song we did got so much um hype that we performed it, and we was like you know we was like our it, it was cool because you just seen the energy that comes with music, people that just didn't know you now you you know what I mean they know you because they seen you perform or they seen they heard something and they liked it, and you know what I mean you don't know until you release it so I just that's why I tell all these youngins that's trying to get out here with this music just do it just do it you know what I'm saying just do it. Hell yeah, man! And, and we got some some more of the homies in here. We got Nick Miles. I don't Shout know this Nick. brother. Boy. Pete. <laughs> oh, this brother, same time as I met Matic. We we all lived in the same dorm and shit back like what thirteen years ago and shit. Yes, Nelly sir. Nell in the building as well. You know what I mean? Dollar Squad and shit. Shout out to Nelly Nell. Shout out um, Nelly Nell the cuz. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But yeah, bro. So yeah, like let's um let's talk about Triple Threat and all that. Like with Triple Threat. I didn't know that you started with Dwayne and Dwight. I thought you started with like Gino or something. So, so Gino came into the picture later, and it was you, Dwayne, and Dwight in the beginning. Yes, sir. It, it, no. it was. What so? What happened? You know, what I mean, we had our group, and we still was rapping and everything. But you know, in, in school, you know, life happens. You play sports. You know, what I mean, you might have a girlfriend or two. So you know, niggas was doing it as a hobby at one point, and then we kind of tapped back in in high school, senior year. You know what I mean? Senior year was, like, that was the year for, like, everybody, like, to do that That had, like, we had the clout that year. That's all I can say. Like, like the brand had the clout. Everyone knew us as doing music. Dwayne, the White, Sterling, uh, Gene, he hopped on at that time. And, it, like, his timing was impeccable because he just came in when the wave was lit. And he took, he took off with his little brand and the sound. So we kind of had a little team. We had a team at a young age. We kind of didn't really know what to do with it. You know what I'm saying? You know that type. It, it was like we was we already had the music. We just didn't know what to do with it. But I'm happy it it, it, it worked out the way it did because we really didn't know what we were doing. So Lord knows what could have happened because we didn't know what the fuck we was doing. I feel you, bro. Out to Sterling too, man. You know when when I first met this brother Matic, man, the one thing that back then MySpace was popping in, he had his brand Triple Threat. It was like you knew that. You know, this is like an actual movement that he's got going down in South Jersey. Like I remember your first music video. You had like you had the you had the the G wagon and you had the girls and shit in the video. You remember that shit? You had yeah, the like, yeah, yeah. wagon shit. I yeah, remember that. that player shit. Salute, bro. Like we did that in college. Did that. Hell yeah! So triple threat, triple threat ENT. Shout out to the whole triple threat and all that. Let's have some more like discussion though on like South Jersey in general in terms of the music and what your influences were like. Like, not per se the childhood influences. Let's talk about, like, what were your influences between the ages of 12 and 17? That five-year gap that influenced Triple Threat and made y'all want to pursue rap music. Like, what were y'all influences? Oh, Gino's in the building. Shout out to Gino, Fresh Living Young. But yeah, what were your um, influences back then? Hello? You good? 
Yeah, yeah, you good? Can you hear me, bro? Yeah. The compromise. Yeah, I was just asking. Um, when Triple Threat started, you know, what I mean, just the, I guess the the nexus of how it all began. You know what I'm saying? Like, what were your musical influences then? Like from preteen up until like 17, like those five years. Like, yeah. what drove you to, to pursue rap? I, I would say it was a it, it was a lot of um, mostly Dipset. I say it was Dipset. Dipset sound and the heat makers. That I was just in love with that. But I was enamored by the samples, how they was taking the um samples and like, you know, manipulating the sound on them. You know, what I mean, making them a whole different thing. Like that's yeah. what really that drove me to get back on the music. Cause when I was doing the music in middle school, it was more driven by the older nineties hip hop like New York scene. Like your DMXs, like the Nas. Nas, those people, you oh. know what I'm saying? So once I got into the high school scene, it was the Dipset wave. So yeah. a lot of my beats had, like, we did this song called Wartime. And, and he, Gene know what I'm talking about. He know about Wartime. Wartime was Dipset written all over. We sampled, like, some orchestra and made a beat out that joint. Like, but it, it it's like a Dipset track. And that's all I would have to say it was Dipset all the way because he was, they were doing dual albums, dual disc albums. Then you had Jim Jones, then you had Joel, then you had Cameron. It was that yeah. whole wave, that 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 purple, you know, that purple haze wave, the Harlem wave. So we were rocking to that shit, South Jersey. That's what we was on that type of time, and and everybody could really attest for that. Like Chase can attest for that. He know Dipset was popping in South Jersey. It's just that was the new. No yeah, we was wearing the um, what was he wearing too? Jabo jeans, the um, <laughs> skein. Mugs was wearing mosquitoes. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, 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 it's yeah. crazy. We was, we was, we okay. were bugging out. You said Jinko jeans. What jeans you said? Ennis jeans. We were wearing Jabos. Jabos. And then, they was, um, then they had uh, mosquito shirts. Them joints that was like painted. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember them joints. Remember them joints? Shit. Yeah, man. Shit, man. Take it back, bro. Hell yeah! I mean, shit. Like when it comes to uh, when it comes to music, though, I mean, I feel like our generation has definitely seen a very like significant shift in the way that music is not only created but distributed. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So it's like, I know that around that time, MySpace was big, and then came Twitter, and then came. You know what's it called? Shit like Twitter, Instagram. That piff was big. Like you know what I mean. Now you got Spotify and YouTube is huge with music now. Like what would you say? Like I remember back in the day hitting the clubs and people weren't on their phones like that. You know what I'm saying? Like like what would you say? That's true. He's exactly. You know what I mean? Like what would you say is like the biggest the biggest shift? You know what I'm saying specifically in the music game. Not just music, but nightlife in general, in regards to hip hop culture. You know what I'm saying? What do you think has changed the most between, let's say, 07 to like in the past five years, 2015 and beyond? You know what I'm saying? I think it, it, what, what's happened is that now that we're in a time where everything is so accessible, yeah. like the music isn't, the music isn't. I'm, I'm, I wouldn't even say that it's the quality. Actually, in my opinion, I feel like the quality is better. I just think that projects are more rushed now, so there's not as much thought. They're, they sound, the songs sound better. They're, they're mixed better. The beats sound better. The cadences, everything sounds better. I mean, that's what I, I based on just listening as a kid and listening to the beats now, things sound better. It's just you got to work so fast that the content isn't what it used to be. The content back in the day, Muggs was wait, doing your albums every three years or like yeah. every two years. So they was really going in a bag. They was going into an environment and actually, you know, coming coming out with some shit, bro. Like, because they had the time. Now you got guys, we, now we releasing projects every, you know what I mean? Two to three months, bro. Like, or every yep. month. There's Muggs releasing projects every month. So it's, now you got that, that aspect of it's just, every day something new something new Whoa. so that's that's it's almost like we're gonna go into a new time like things change over time it's a matter of figuring out what that next thing gonna be you know hell yeah, hell yeah. and shout out to emg thump from splash town texas salute 
the loops. Two, loops. two has to fly out with Matic Beats, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I definitely agree, man. I mean, like, to give some people a backstory, I met Matic in 07, you know what I'm saying? He was years into his production, all that. Me, I came more from the punk rock alternative influence of music in my teen years. And Maddox showed me how fucking fun it is. The fuck is that? Firefly. But yeah, anyways, pardon me. Anyways, like Maddox, he showed me FL Studio. And for a lot of y'all who may not know what that is, that's a software program that allows you to do almost anything with sound. I still use it to this day. Maddox, do you still use FL Studio? Like, because I feel like that's like, you know how Batman has his utility belt. That's like a producer's utility belt, like the programs, the, the, the drum kits. You know what I mean? We always try to adjust it. What do you love the most about using FL Studio or any other program? And in terms of production, what other programs do you use? Like, I know producers don't really give out their secrets, so I'm not saying that, but it's like, what, how do you approach making a beat? You know what I'm saying? Like, what are your favorite programs? And what are your influences in terms of other producers? Like, do you listen to the new beats nowadays? Or are you more setting your own sound and rhythm? Like, how do you approach making beats and all that? Yeah, man, I would say, like, at the basis of, like, the sounds of my beats, I use the FL Studio platform. Uh, when I was, you know, I've used different platforms. Uh, I've used, I've used this, I remember I used this keyboard when I was younger that was, like, a hip-hop-based keyboard. And I used the Yamaha. I, I used some keyboards in time. And then once I got that Bell Studio, it's pretty much, it is like a keyboard, but it's on the screen. And what it does is it gives you a, I, it gives you avenues to manipulate the sound to your liking. So that's what I would say I like the most about it. Now, how I approach a beat when I go in there, I just, I'm all about manipulating sounds. Now, I like chords and all that, but I'm more about manipulation and sounds. So I'm trying to find a dope ass sample, a dope ass, you know, riff or a loop that's going to like just you know put me in a trance. And then it's then at that point, then it, then the drums are added. A beat can happen just off of me fucking around, just going through some samples, going through a list of samples and just hearing something from it. Like recently, I just made a beat like that, just hearing something from the sounds is just um, you know just came together. And it was almost like I wasn't even trying to make that type of beat. I had an idea of making a beat more into a 808, you know, a, you know, trap sound, and it ended up becoming like a, a a a reggae, like like a reggae East Coast party beat. Oh shit! That's so it, it's weird like that, but it's also like you find rhythm in beats. Like I mean, that night I made a beat like before that, so I started. I, I was in my bag. I always tell producers, like, yeah, like, you made a hot beat, don't stop. Go and try and make another one, because you probably going to make another one that's better than that one you just made. And that's Hell what yeah. happened, bro. Hell yeah. It just I happened think... on accident. That's A lot of my shit be on accident, really. But it's just doing it. It's just, you know, you should just, you should try. If you make a beat and then you like it, keep going. Don't, don't, don't like, just keep hearing that beat. Like, I'm good for the day and shit. Try selling online. No, nah, keep it going, because now you got a rhythm. It's, it's just like rapping. You know what I mean? If you do a song, say you do a song off the top, or say you yeah. do a song you wrote, and then you did partial off the top, and you murked that shit. Like, you, the shit you did off the top, you killed it. You're like, whoa, you might want to put another beat on, because you don't know what's going to happen. You might make another hit. Whoa. Hell yeah. Like, when it comes to that, let me ask you something, because you said something very significant just now. You know what I mean? Um... Oh, by the way, EMG, I think he's asking Maddox for beats. You know, when I was in Houston, we had a road trip up to Dallas. Shout out to Dallas Global and Terry. Shout out. And I was playing some of uh some of the music, and they trying to fuck with you out there, bro. They want some beats. You heard? So I'll, I'll oh, plug y'all in. So Thump, I'll plug y'all in. And oh, oh, shit, we got some more of the homies in here now. You know what I'm saying? Exhale Paradise. You know what I'm saying? What's good, bro? Oh, you know shit. My mean? boy Kareem up in this bitch. Oh, yeah, and, Kareem. And he told me a funny-ass story out in Cali, bro. <laughs> oh word! <laughs> oh shit! Man, it's shit. Some funny What's shit, up, but it's real out there, boy. He out in Cali still, Kareem. You still out in Cali, bro? I should have holler at you. I was in Santa Monica and Inglewood, man. Shout out El Prez and all that. But anyways, yo, Matic, I got a question, man, because what you were saying before very significant. You were talking about earlier about how you were very influenced by heat makers and before that '90s rap and whatnot. And you, then you said how you were making a beat recently 
and it started out as like some 808s trap shit. I feel like the past 10 years, arguably ever since BMF from Rick Ross and Styles P and Hard in the Paint, we've seen a transformation in hip hop production. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, how do you feel about hip hop now, even R&B having trap in the beats? I really, my my opinion on the R&B, that shit needs to come back. They don't need to be in the rap lane. Like, that shit needs to have its own lane still. It needs to go back to the, uh, it needs to just go back to the essence of the, ninth, the 90s wave. It needs to just go into, a, like, a a, revol a revolution of, like, either sampling or making their own type of sound and beats like that. And just, yeah. and, and, and get some true R&B singers, no auto-tune, none of that shit. But I feel like the rap shit, it definitely changed after BMF, and they kind of were a catalyst of changing it because of like the the sound of the BMF, like it was something that was heard before, but it, they bring it back because you gotta remember the, Me the the Memphis '90s era. Hell yeah, with three six and all them. Hell yeah, that shit sounded all hey, like they, they was doing the trap shit back in the '90s, bro. All that shit was eight oh eight doom doom. Hell yeah. Had the little hi hats Same off, passing the shit. They was making the shit on the drum shit. machine, bro. Like it, they bring it back. What's the name? Just went to the essence, and he. That's why he's still cool now. Like he, he like really who? knew the hip hop game, and he went to the Memphis bag, and we yeah. didn't know about it, and he brought it back, so it sounded new. That hard in the paint, all that's that Memphis. <laughs> All them shit sound like that in the nineties. If you go to all the Memphis Jones, it all sound like that. It shit blew my mind when I heard that shit. I was like, oh, okay. Or what's your favorite? What's your favorite uh, Memphis? Uh, well, not Memphis in general, but your favorite like trap mixtape. For me, it's Rubber Band Business from Juicy J and Lex Luger. Bro, I was about day, to say that shit. That's though. the hardest shit ever, yo. That. Every track. I was about bro. to say that shit, yo. That was gonna say rubber band business, bro. I remember just blasting that shit and just being being my oh, zone in the whip. That type of mixtape is the shit you can get high, get in your car, turn that shit up. You be good, bro. You gonna get Hell to your yeah. destination. You gonna be focused. That's Hell yeah, Lex every Luger. Beat. Hell yeah, and you know Lex Luger. I don't know if it was volume one or two in the intro. He's like, he's like, you know, get high. Chip lean, smoke weed. <laughs> Remember that part? The interlude? That's a classic, man. That's that a classic. That's hard just the way it starts. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. That's a fact. Shout out Juicy J and Lex Luger and DJ Travel Holmes. For real. Hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. Um, well, yeah, man. If we were to... Let's see what else we could talk about in regards to trap music. Because I feel like trap music is such an art that... To continue off of what you were saying with Lex Luger... When I first heard, I remember when I first heard Blowing Money Fast, I had transferred schools. I was in high school in Long Island, and I was driving back to Jersey one night, and I was crossing the Verrazano Bridge. I'll never forget this shit. I was crossing the Verrazano Bridge, and I was playing Hot 97. It was probably like 11 o'clock at night, and whoever was DJing, he was like, yo, we got that new Styles P and Rick Ross. And I'm like, oh, shit, this shit probably some fire. And then when I turned on, when I turned on the volume, I was like, I've never heard anything like this before. Like I've heard, I've heard Shorty Red. Like I've heard Shorty Red and Jeezy, but when I heard that shit, I was like, "This is the new fucking wave." Like you can't deny the sound. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, man. But yo, Maddie, how? What happened between you and Petey Pablo? How'd you get put on with that, bro? Like, what year was that when Petey Pablo showed love and shit? Shout out to Petey. Uh, pardon me, man, Pablo. That was um. Well, that, that was back in like 2011 or 2010. Like oh, uh, I, I linked up with him on Twitter. I was I was I was really like linking up with a few artists on Twitter, and when that shit really was started out like getting popping in the beginning, like maybe with two years in, I started really hitting up artists. Um, I got linked with Bow Wow. He did a song, and then at that point, I started hitting up other artists, and I hit up P D Pablo, and I let uh, I let him I sent him the beat Bang Out. It's the beat we use for the um the Logic Unplugged uh, theme song. He heard that shit. He said Tim heard the shit. They was going crazy over it. He called me. The shit was crazy, bro. Like he said he was gonna call me back. He never really hit me back and shit. And I ended up losing his contacts. But to this day, I still talk to him on Twitter. 
I sent him some work maybe a few months back. You know what I mean? But so we still like talking and everything. It's just I think his wave now ain't really based, ain't aligned to my sound anymore. Like if you listen to new PD Pablo, none of them beats really sound like no shit I make. So, you know, with him we just we kind of just kind of rock with each other, but it you know, until I make something that he's gonna really rock with, we might we might make something happen. But um yeah, it's crazy. I I remember when um Brandon, remember Brandon in uh in college? I don't know if you remember Brandon because he came in. I think he came in when you uh when you transferred, but he put I know me Mac Miller. You know Brandon, right? Uh, he was like um. He chill with Phil and all them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know Brandon. I've known Brandon. Yeah. He put me on the Mac Miller. Yo, when Mac Miller was first like like coming up, Mac Miller was about to use a beat, but. I ain't had a bass really turned up the way he needed it to be. And I ain't, I, at that time, I ain't know the tech, how to really, like, master the shit, right, and get the bass dumping like that. I ain't, I wasn't all the way experienced, like, where I'm at now. So it's been some, it's been some disappointments in the shit, but it's been some blessings, too. That's why I tell you, man, you just gotta be, keep going at it. Like, look at those, man. Those, those, you, those got, it got tracks with, 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 you know, I mean, artists that are, that are signed artists in the game, bro. That's 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 deep in the game that you just did videos with, but it's about repetition and putting in the work. Like he he put the effort in, he, he you know what I mean he put the effort in. He talked to the right people. He made it happen. At the end of the day, you have to talk to people, yo. It's not like just gonna happen for you. Salute, salute, yeah, man. That's that's what it's about, man. Like most definitely, I feel like I feel like it's dope how how like you know what I'm saying you reminisce like. The other day, I was going through my old emails and I found some of the old beats that I was making back in the day. And it's like just listening to the sound and just seeing the progression. You know what I mean? And that's what it's all about, bro. Like, I feel like when it comes to that, with music in general, I feel like we can delve into this next topic, podcast. Because I'll tell you the honest truth, bro. I never expected you to be a guest host on a podcast and you're a natural at it. You know what I'm saying? Like watching Logic Unplugged with 2G, shout out to Logic Unplugged, Shay and King Gab as well. Y'all have something unique, something different. Y'all have your own lane. And I think it's fucking dope. You know what I'm saying? Thank so, you. Uh, I appreciate that, man. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Uh, shout out to Neil, Max sister. What's up to Neil? Shout out to Luke. And um, or salute. And tell me how, because I know there's some insight how you know your cousin is best friends with Ab and whatnot. Give me some more insight as to what sparked your interest in joining the team on Logic Unplugged, and how it all just progressed. Because it wasn't just an overnight thing, of course. You know what I'm saying? How did it happen? Man, it was crazy. Like it was, it was around the time when when we started getting back in our bag with the music shit. I, I just um I set the distribution up, got the music out, got got everything set up with the label and, and, and everything. So the music thing was solid. So then, you know, Chase hit me up. He let me know. He was like, man, I'm trying to do a podcast. He was like, I'm trying to get, you know what I mean, it'd be me, you, and you probably get a girl. You know what I mean? Maybe get another dude. But like we really wanted to base it on maybe two dudes and a you know, a girl in that joint. So we just we talked a few times about it. I always wanted to um, step in that lane in a in, in, in the um, you know media lane, just because you know I know that personalities are always going to mess with certain people. So you can anybody can really do a podcast if you if you got an opinion, you know what I mean. If you got an opinion, and also if you you know what I mean if you also are engaged or you enjoy like you enjoy your topic. If you got something like that, you just shoot shit with your friends with. Y'all should just, you know, set up a podcast and get it, get get the work because things come from that. So, I just I just know that the first episode, it was definitely like after we did it, I knew I was like, oh, all right, this is for me, and yeah. and I realized that the people that was around me, like the people that we that we had all together, was perfect. And, but we really put that investment out, me and me and Chase. And I, I think that's why things are coming to full service. We really did. Yeah. We put the time in the investment, the money, the time, like, and it's coming out in a way that, you know, people 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 should be getting podcasts. I think 
You should be getting the podcast like how you're getting the Joe Buttons or you're getting the, the Gilly podcast. You should be getting it where it comes every week to you on, on, on YouTube, you know what I mean, on a platform. So I think we started it off there. And we, we have plans now of making it better. We want to make it better, you know what I mean? So you're yeah. going to see progression very quickly. We're still, you know, in the talks of things, but we do want to make things better on the podcast. And you'll see things that will go on the surface. But um, we love right. that the editor we have now, RAMG Studios. But we see that there's going to be progression over time. You know what I'm saying? And we want to make sure we do it in a steady pace because just like music, you got to move in a steady pace. So it's, I, I would say the podcast game, it's, it's it opens your mind up. You're, you, you pretty much, your platform is a podcast. It, it's opening up your mind, bro. You have to literally like interview different people, different personalities, different people come in your show. You listen to, you know, I'm in the music base, but you're in the base of your brand being music artists, um, people that are uh, affiliated, that are, are either in the industry, the music, they're in whatever. So you, you, you know what I mean? You're in the podcast bag. So, oh, yeah. I, I I mean, just looking at it now, like, yo, like, I'm happy I made that decision because because it's now it's just opened my mind now, and and it and also what it does too for you if you're a music if you're an artist, you know what I mean. Whatever podcast you do, if you're an artist, you're, you're gonna meet so many different people. You know what I mean? It's just inevitable. Even if you don't want to meet them, you're gonna meet people. So. I, I would tell yeah. you, man, podcasting is where the way to go. Oh, yeah. you're trying to get into the just the media, the music industry, you 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 do have to have a uh, public opinion on things, and and people need to know you, public relations. Hell yeah! And one thing that really uh, impressed me about y'all is your production quality. You know what I'm saying, and just how y'all complement each other. Like Shay, you know what I mean? She has her opinion on topics and oh yeah. Ab has his own and you have your own. And y'all personalities are kinda like, you know when you have a really good meal where you have to starch the veggies and the protein? Yeah. Y'all good, wholesome production. You know what I'm saying? You could tell that it's natural and organic and real. And that's what I fuck with y'all about. You know what I mean? No cap. Um looks like our audio may still be compromised. Can you hear me, Matic? Just letting everybody know. All right, can you hear me, Matic? Yeah. All right, shout out to our guest right now. This is the Pass and Fly Hour. Also, just want to take a second to uh, let people know that due to YouTube, some of our interviews, as you know, I, I do be interviewing porn stars every now and then, and YouTube has started to take them down. So I have partnered up with Patreon. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com, where for just $5 a month, not only will you get all the interviews that are already on YouTube, you'll also get the unrated two out to handle videos that YouTube will not allow me to post. And you'll be able to download them as well. If you pay $15 a month, you'll be invited to be a guest on a future episode of the Pass and Fly Hour. 50 bucks a month, you'll be able to actually have your brand promoted on every episode via your logo and a personal shout out from me on every episode. All right, so we're back with Matic. You know what I'm saying? Matic Beats in the building, South Jersey. You know what real I mean? Represent. Quick, real quick. Yo, artist, man, invest. Yo, what he just said, $50 a month, man, you get your brain on there, dog, that's a campaign. You can do that for three to four months, bro. $50, have that shit on there, bro. In four months, bro, you're going to have about, you're going to have about five, shit, you're going to have about a thousand people that, that you didn't know now know you. You know what I'm Absolutely. saying? So, Absolutely. yo, this is an opportunity, man. Like, Absolutely. get into that. Yup. If any artist, I'll put your mixtape cover, you know what I mean, with a snippet, whatever y'all request, you know what I'm saying, just to show my gratitude for supporting the brand. Salute. And um, this is one thing that I was going to ask. What the hell was I going to ask, man? Oh, yeah, about podcasts. Let's continue the podcast discussion because podcasts, honestly, I'll tell you right now, I have, I have a full cable service. I have Verizon Fios. I have not watched cable TV in probably two years. All I watch are music videos and podcasts. YouTube is all that I watch. So I'm trying to ask you, Matic, like, what podcasts 
do you frequent on YouTube? Like, what are your top three most enjoyable podcasts that you view now? Top three right now has got to be the uh, – it's going to be the Gilly number one. I'm always tuning in to okay. that. Um, I, I rock the Joe North Button North. podcast. That shit lit. And then um, I, I, I peeped one of the uh, – the uh, I got a shout out my boy uh, Toroy, too. He got this John uh, Average Joe podcast. Check that shit out. That shit gets that get, gets gets real because he be uh, he just his topics are all about just current event topics on like dating culture. So mm. some of them shits be getting real, man. So like I kind of really I tune into that shit heavy. I tune into the Average okay. Joe. Then the Joe Rogan shit kind of funny too, man. I watched one of them Jones. That shit had me cracking up. He a bu- he a bug out, bro. Joe Rogan, <laughs> yeah, he a bug out, bro. He just Joe literally Rogan. just be getting high and just be talking about conspiracy shit. Just be smoking and shit. <laughs> That's funny shit. I haven't seen Joe Rogan since like in years, but his shit is always. Lit. He be talking about DMT. He swears by that shit. Yeah, he, he a trip. <laughs> he always be talking about DMT and shit. Oh man. Just wild, just wild shit that no one really even researching because it's like okay, all right. Like, Random shit. Funny Yo, so um, next topic, man. Like as you know, as everyone else knows, we're in the current pandemic right now, COVID nineteen. It's been a serious ordeal throughout twenty twenty. Twenty twenty has been a a wild year. That's uh, we um are going through a pandemic. We lost Pop Smoke, God bless the dead. We lost like RP Pop well, George Floyd, of course, Breonna yeah, Taylor. Yeah, we lost FBG Duck. FBG Duck. Um, damn, you know what I'm saying? Fred the Godson. Fred the Godson. Um, you know what I mean? 2020's been a uh, a trying year. And uh pardon me if I forgot to mention anyone else. Um, throughout all of this, man. First question is, how have you been holding up in terms of the pandemic? How have you been using it to your advantage to be productive? And number two, what is your view on hip-hop when it comes to the loss of so many people? Because we've been losing hella artists because of gun violence and drugs. More than I can even, like, it's been wild. The past five years, it's been unprecedented. You know what I'm saying? So what's your view on that? The pandemic and then, you know what I mean, us losing so many young, talented kings in this shit, kings and queens. You know, the, the pandemic is just, um when it first happened, it kind of put me in a panic. But it kind of, you know, once I once I took a few steps back, you know, it's it's just a, a challenging time, man. I just, I just say that whatever, you know, anybody's spiritual background is, man, you just got to be prayed up right now. Just be prayed up and have faith. That's the number one thing, faith. Like, yeah. that's that's when I've been really trying to just, uh, you know, uh, think about more than anything. Just being faithful, being thankful for things right now. It's just, and, 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 and also just having a sense of urgency. That's also kind of what it's done to me. I, yeah. I, I kind of regret a lot of the uh, bullshitting that I did and, and and it kind of brought me to a realization that yo like we don't know what's gonna happen so we need to like move like you know this you kind of got to move like tomorrow could be some wild shit so that's yeah. why i've just been moving a little bit smarter you know trying to really you know discern certain situations and decisions and also just you know i just say you know stay out the way like that's what i be telling a lot of people like they be like what you been up to I'm like, staying out the way like just stay out the way right now because with all this shit going on like you don't know what you could get like pulled into it's just so much it's more than the pandemic you got the protests you got the violence yeah. that done through the police and then you got rappers dying left and right we didn't even and marlo died too like it's it's yeah, like so many marlo. of them yeah. So getting to that topic, bro, it's like I, I can't speak so much on it because I don't know. I don't know what's you know behind you know. I don't know what's the smoke and mirrors behind it, and I can't speak much on the, that because I don't know what's behind it. I don't know what the agenda is. I don't know what's behind it. I I know that we as people really, it, it's almost 
it, it, it gives us a, it gives us a, a, a stain. And I think it's all like, for me, I, I feel like it's all, you know, um, orchestrated, but it gives us a stain. But you, it's like, if, even if you say that, it don't matter because the stain's already done. That's yeah. how I feel about the situation. I, I, I don't know. I can't tell you what it is. But why is it happening like this, like this, like this, like this? That's what I'm saying. That's a fact. Like, it's crazy. Like, we are definitely in uh, significant times, man. Like, it's definitely, uh, I feel like it's a changing of the guard. Like, yeah. kind of like how you saw with the Rodney King riots in 92. And then, like, you know what I mean? How just music in general started to change, like when the chronic dropped and then you had like the internet boom and then Bill Clinton became president and shit and Desert Storm. I feel like it's very, it's not the same, like it's its own unique moment in history, but we're in a very, we gonna remember these days for a long time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I definitely agree. Like I remember going to a protest earlier this summer and um, it was in Elizabeth. And I had never felt that kind of energy before. You know what I'm saying? There was like 300 people in the park in Elizabeth yelling Black Lives Matter. I'm talking about white, black, Asian, Latina, Indian, just human energy. You know what I'm saying? Just knowing the difference between right and wrong. You feel me? And it was the most beautiful thing I ever seen, dog. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was some real shit. And it shows you the human spirit that will persevere regardless. You know what I'm saying? Right. So most definitely, bro. This pandemic is crazy, too. I mean, when it comes to the music and shit, I feel like you're right. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you mentioned Marlo, too. We lost a lot of artists, dog. You know what I mean? And if we go back one full calendar year, we lost Juice World. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's crazy, bro. You know what I'm saying? How do you feel? Because looking at it now, how do you feel about... because on my own Pass and Fly Records platform, I every Saturday I post billboard sales for the top five albums in hip hop and rap. And right now, the only rapper who is remaining on top five who's still alive is Lil Baby. You have the baby, he fluctuates. He'll be in the top five every other week. Post Malone every other week. Gunna every other week. But Lil Baby's always there. One and two, though, have always been Pop Smoke and Juice World for the past like six weeks. You know what I'm saying? How do you feel about people giving people flowers when they pass compared to, like, keeping it while they're alive? Because I feel like Pop Smoke didn't get nearly as much love when he was alive than when he was dead. I, I think it's, um, I, I think it's, I think it's almost, like, um, expected. And it's sad yeah. that it's expected because you don't know, you don't know the, you know, the backstory behind it. Like it's expected that if someone's gonna pass that they're gonna make more in sales. Because now people are in tune. They're gonna be looking at the reports. They're gonna be looking at the new videos. They're gonna be looking at the videos in tune. They gonna then the people that were fans, they're gonna really listen to the music. You know what I'm saying? Like and the whole situation with Pop Smoke, it's so like it was so fast. You know what I mean? Like that shit was too fast, man. Like it so yeah, of course he's gonna make he's gonna he's gonna make a lot in album sales right now. Like he's gonna he's he's gonna make a lot of album sales for a while. I I think. And, and that's Juice a good World's thing. Still making money, like Juice World's still getting money off. It's still right now. And, yeah, and, and don't get me wrong, that's a beautiful thing. I'm all about their family eating good, their wild, eating bro. good. But it's like, you know what I'm saying, like. That's that's beautiful, but at the same time, it's like when they were young, not when they were young, but when they were here in the physical with us, you know what I'm saying? Right. Juice World was getting his props. Juice World, don't get me wrong, Juice World may be an exception. But Pop Smoke, he was on his way. Right. But it's like, is it because of the potential that he had? I feel like Pop Smoke, like he, you know what I mean? Like Pop Smoke, I feel like should have gotten more props. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're right though. You know what I'm saying? Pardon me if I interrupted you though. But I'm yeah, not, man. I'm not. Yeah, I think uh, the, I think it's Pop Smoke had the potential, and also he had the um, he really had the look. He had the look, and he had the sound more than anything. He was, he had the distinctive sound of a rapper, and he had the look. So that's why it's just, for him, he's gonna he's gonna keep making money, and they're gonna, it's almost like he's gonna be like the new Tupac. Like yeah. Pop Smoke won't be forgotten. 
Like they're gonna keep Pop Smoke on name around a long time. Yeah, I can already see it. He's he's like an action figure, man. Word. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like shout out to uh, R.I.P. to Bankroll Fresh. That's what he uh said. I remember he did an interview. Um, that was one of that was one of the rappers I was really uh, tapping into. Like, like I was rocking with uh Bankroll Fresh when he was alive, bro. Um, he, Bankroll he, Fresh. Word. He was a, he, like he was the truth. Like he said, uh, what did he say? He was like, yeah. His his name was Young Fresh and he changed it and he asked why he's like well you know I just figured I wanted to brand rebrand myself but and they said why you pick Bankroll Fresh he said shit sound like an action figure he was like yo like most we make it he's like shit I want to have action figures made like that's him like thinking ahead in the future like that mug was a like he was a true entrepreneur like if he would have if he would have been alive still we probably would be seeing Bankroll Fresh action figures. That shit yep. does sound like an action figure. Bank, I'm gonna get a bankroll fresh. Like bankroll fresh, it's like a superhero. Oh, so yeah. it's like Pop Smoke is, is is a he's literally like a superhero with the rap shit. Or, he'll, he'll be or, around. His name gonna be around, bro. Hell yeah, most definitely, man. I mean, there's a thing. We have a little bit over ten minutes left, and I have a special segment after what I'm about to ask you next. But for those who may not know, Matic dropped a dope EP about two weeks ago titled Bana. You know what I'm saying? No, it was three weeks ago. Three weeks yeah. ago. He dropped a, an EP titled Bana. You know what I mean? Uh, also featuring Fresh Living Young's own Gino Brown. You know what I'm saying? Uh, why don't you let the fans know a little bit about that, including the music video, the first set of visuals for the project to the song Loose Ends, directed by... Nova King, shout out to Nova King. Shout out to Nova King, my bro. Salute yeah. to Nova King. Yeah, man. So, I, I mean, that shit's all the old to Carabana, bro. I've been there seven times. Gene been out there six times. You know what I mean? Cousins, you know what I mean? He, scro he rode out with me a few times. Shit. Cousin went out there like three, four times. Josh been out there about the same amount of time. J Mo. So, that's just. Shout out, shout out J Mo, bro. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, like, it's a culture. I just figured. You know, with this music shit, I'm gonna the first album like little EP should have been you know something like that, something fun. And what I want to do is I want to get people excited for next year because Carabonic, you know, coming back. You know, what I'm saying that's gonna be a nice wave. People missed it this year; it was canceled. So my whole what's it? I knew it was canceled. I was like I gotta do an EP. Like I gotta do an EP. But I gotta have that shit on. Like I got I gotta do that for me. So it, it 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 like listening to it always kind of puts me in that vibe. Um, I tell anybody listening that like if you've ever been to Carabana, if you've been there once, twice, listen to that shit, man. Listen to that whole thing. Like it'll put you in that, put you in that mood, yo. It will. But um, yeah, getting Gene on it, you know what I mean. I had to. Gene been out there a few times. He been out Carabana. He know that life. And you know, Gene's been the dude I've been rocking with for a minute. You know what I mean. College, we we dropped okay. like bad mixtapes, you know what I'm saying? Dose was, was with us making music. We 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 did like about three or four mixtapes, man. We was just making a lot of music. So it was only right to get Gene on that shit. You know what I mean? I got Gene on there. Fresh Living Young brand, Triple Threat brand, you know what I mean? Got that together in the music video. Um, you know what I mean? It was I didn't wanna I didn't wanna do I, I wanted to do something that was true to the music video and the content. So I just just took it to the roots of like just the creating of the song, and it's, I just wanted to show people how I created the song, like just on some chill shit. So I, I, and, and that's like for for the whole you know the whole concept. That's where I wanted to bring it for the first thing because in, in time I wanna I want the videos to progress just with the life, but I want to kind of um, it's gonna be a reality TV show. That, that's all I'll say from for for Maddie Beats. You know what I mean? Anything music video wise, it's gonna be like reality TV. You gonna get like a glimpse of what's really going on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. I feel you. That's what's up. And I definitely like the vibe that your music brings. You know what I mean? It's realism. And one thing that I always respect and appreciate from artists is where you get in reality what you hear and see on TV in your car speakers. You know what I mean? The mag that you hear in the lyrics. It's the same nigga that I've been known for like 13 plus years. You know what I'm saying? Same dude. You know what I mean? And that's something that not a lot of people do to this day. 
And it's definitely, it has to be saluted and applauded. You know what I mean? So other than that, Maddie, without a doubt, bro, love, bro, love. Like, other than that, like, what would you have to say to anyone before we get to this next segment in regards to anything that is in the future for Matic Beats, Logic Unplugged, or anything in general? You know what I mean? Before we uh, progress to this next uh, segment that I got for you. Well, I got, um, I got Kinga coming up. So this month I'm going to drop a beat tape for everybody in September. I'm going to drop a beat tape. You know what I mean? Just a, something for, for just the people that just want to hear the music, hear beats. You just want to vibe out, just hear some beats. The dope little beat tape I'm going to put out in September. But um, the major project, Kinga, I'm probably be dropping that in October. You know what I mean? Drop that in uh-huh. October. And, and, but Kinga is going to be like an EP. You know what I mean? It's going to be something nice. Um, I'm going to uh, drop a single for, for, for Kinga. Um, most likely, I'm gonna drop it in September around the time I drop the tape. So it may, they might be another visual coming in October, but uh, it might be one more sooner than that. I don't know. I might give y'all. I got another visual. I just, I'm thinking about giving it to y'all, but I, I might have another visual in September and like either the beginning of the month or the middle of the month. But the next visual, visual like the, the like video. Like, that's going to be, like, October. But that shit going to be lit. I got a good idea set out. That's lit. That's lit, bro. Well, listen, man, I want to thank you for being on the Passion Fly Hour. Matic Beats Instagram is T-H-E-R-E-A-L-M-A-T-I-C-B-E-A-T-S. The Real Matic Beats. If I'm not mistaken, that's also your ad for Twitter as well, right? The ad for Twitter is just Matic Beats. Matic Beats. All right, bet. And also make sure that you check out that Bana and all other music that Matic has on streaming platforms. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and we're going to get into this next segment. You ready, bro? Let's do it, man. All right. Now, this is called Five Questions. All right. I'm going to ask you these five questions. You got to answer them. First thing that comes to your mind to the best of your ability. All right. So are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's do this. All right, bet. First question. This is the first question that I got for you, Matic. All right, hold on real quick. All right, tater tots or curly fries? Curly fries. Who is your favorite 90s actress? Stacey Dash. All right, all right, all right, all right. Uh, What's the maximum amount of money that you'd spend on a first date with the girl of your dreams? I spend, I spend, I spend the 250. 250. All right, all right. Bet, bet, bet. Next question. Would you rather go in the ring for eight rounds with LeBron James or Tyrese? Tyrese. I don't know, man. Shit. Tyrese looks like he'll beat a nigga ass. Pause. I mean, I LeBron know. James is kind of on some, like, he be on some funny shit. But I, that, I that know, nigga reach is crazy, though, bro. I, I think I like, like a, I got more of a shot with Tyrese than LeBron, bro. That nigga LeBron reaches outrageous. That nigga six eleven, bro. I'm five. I'm five nine, bro. Shit, I got bro. More I got a shot with Tyrese. I, I, I can't I th- even tackle LeBron James like, without him like realizing I'm about to tackle him because his reach is so long. I can't do shit, bro. I can't do nothing. And LeBron the type. LeBron the type where if, where if he were to hit you and you fell down, he would help you back up. He'd be like, you all right, brother? You good? You good? You know what I mean? Tyrese, he's the type where he'll, 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 yo, he'll have eyes set to kill, dog. I just have a feeling that Tyrese, you hit him one time, he'll black out. I just, anyways, man. Anyways, dog. That shit was right. funny as hell. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Anyways, dog. All right, next. If you were in a late 80s action film, would you be the hero or the villain? Man, I would be the uh, villain in the 80s, John. Or no they doubt. Cool as shit, man. Like, Joker in the 80s, John, he was a, he was a mess, bro. Uh, Straight yeah. fucking mess, bro. He was just wreaking havoc. Uh, like, uh, everyone loves the villain in the 80s. Like, the hero, like now they like the heroes now. But yeah. the 80s, bro, the villains was popping. They, they had all the scary movies. You had the Jason. You had Freddy Krueger. You had uh, it. Word. You had, the villains was winning, bro. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Word. I would probably choose to be the villain in one of them joints, too, yo. I ain't going to front. Facts. In the 80s? 
Yeah. Like in Lethal Weapon or something, like you got the whole skyscraper and shit. Like, you know what I mean? Man, Hero got to climb elevators, break, saps and shit. That's gonna you just you in on. the top. <laughs> you be on as an actor. If you did that as a, if you played the villain in Lethal Weapon, you're on now. You can even be a standing villain. If they see in your face, you won't get another role. Because we can talk about you. Like, remember that mug in the mood in Lethal Weapon? That? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, bro. All right, man. Listen, man, we are wrapping up the Passion Fly Hour now with my brother, Matty Beats. You know what I'm saying? Make sure that you follow him. As I previously said, T-H-E-R-E-L-M-A-T-I-C-B-E-A-T-S on Instagram, The Real Matic Beats. And on Twitter, Matic Beats, M-A-T-I-C-B-E-A-T-S. Also, make sure that you subscribe to his podcast, that's Logic Unplugged with two Gs. Logic with two Gs, co-hosting with Shay, including King Ab. You know what I mean? And uh, you know what I'm saying? Make sure you check out Bana, the new EP, dropped July 31st on all streaming platforms, and his new video that dropped today, titled Loose Ends from that project. You know what I mean? It's on the Logic Unplugged channel on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? But listen, bro, you know what I mean? We gonna get up. You know what I mean? I'm gonna see you in a few weeks. I haven't seen you since probably like Two, three weeks ago, anyways. I'm gonna see you probably first week of September. You know what I'm saying, bro? And it's all love, bro. You know what I'm saying? Just uh just holler at me and shit. And uh, you know what I mean? We're gonna keep this shit progressing. You already know what it is, man. Ain't nothing new. You are ready, bro. Thanks for having right, me bro. on here, man. Anytime, man. Passing flower, we out. Make sure you get on our Patreon, money. All right. All right, peace. All right, bro. All right, all right, love. One. One.